Welcome to the PharmaSource podcast. Today's episode is an interview with Fabio Russo, Chief Procurement Officer at Alpha Sigma. Fabio explains the new target operating model he's introducing to the Italian pharma company, including how procurement is becoming a much more strategic partner to the business, the digital journey that the team is on, and how the company is integrating their recent acquisitions into the business. I hope you enjoy the interview. Fabio, thank you so much for joining us on the PharmaSource podcast today. You've got a really interesting career, quite a bit of time in the automotive industry at Chrysler, management consulting at McKinsey and Bain, and amongst other roles, of course. Now you're chief procurement officer and head of ESO at Alpha Sigma, one of the major Italian pharmaceutical group. I'm keen to understand that journey that you've been on and, and what you've learned along the way. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the journey was a kind of, uh, some case was a reverse compared to what typically happens. In my case, uh, it was in a way the other way around. So I started quite a long uh, procurement trajectory and journey in the industry. Automotive, and then at a certain point, I just decided to, that I wanted to see something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then first thing, I changed industry. So I moved into kind of a telco. And then um, I had the opportunity basically to join McKinsey. How easy was it to make that transition? So the transition wasn't easy at all. I mean, from a content perspective, of course, you come with a, a huge background, way easier to talk to client because you speak the same language. So you come, you come to the industry, you've seen a lot of things on your, you've experienced and you've tasted on your skin. So actually, you know what, what you're talking about. I think what was uh, one of the things that was really different was um, the pace because indeed um, the pace is way different. And of course, the fact that you span, at least in my case, I was spanning from a, a variety of industries, right? Which were in some yeah. cases also very different from what I was used to. Right? I mean, um, the typical automotive uh, is way different from, uh, I don't know, the financial services. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. when, you, when, you, when you do this kind of adjust or changes, um, the impact is not negligible. And also the structure that you have is very different, right, from a, from a, a typical uh, business type of uh, engagement, right? So mm-hmm. I mean, that was, uh, I mean, the first months were really were really tough, right, to be to be used to. But then I think the consulting the consulting was extremely exciting because of that variety and because of that um, mental challenge, right? That every three to four to six months you have to tackle something different. Mm-hmm. In a different industry with a different um, background and with a different uh, in a different evolution phase of the of the of the client, right? In some cases we're early stage, in some other cases we're um, M and A or post hoc, in some other cases we're well established organization. So the the type of um, the way you 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 deal with similar problem is is very different. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. at a certain point, uh, I was just um, to be honest, willing to go back to the to industry because actually consulting is very much, especially in the, the MBB, is very much concept and design. And then what it's missing is a little bit more the, the uh, putting in a way, um, rolling up the sleeve and going into the execution mode, right? Sure. And then, and that was a little bit the um, the uh, the push to, to look at the industry back and go back to industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end, here I am, right? Uh, and I think the 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 excitement here is 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 double because actually it's a combination of indeed the execution, so making sure that you can really nail down results, but also of a thing is in a very um, in a way in a very exciting moment of the journey because the company is really transforming itself. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We just had uh, three acquisitions in the last twelve months, and two out of the three in the last uh, two months, right? Okay. Three months with a very different um, complexity and, and geographical span compared to the, the, the first one. The first one was basically an Italian company, so much easier. Also, from a geographical mm-hmm. and cultural mm-hmm. perspective, in the, in the last two, they are really one in the US and one in the basically Northern Europe. So, with a variety of uh, problems to tackle, uh, <laughs> which makes the whole uh, it's a procurement transformation even more interesting. What does that mean in terms of the number of suppliers that 
your team's managed. How has that increased as you've taken on these three acquisitions? The number has increased quite substantially. The first acquisition was a boost, especially on the direct side. The, the other two, a boost more on the indirect side. And also the portfolio that we got was limited compared to the previous one. Um, so I think overall, the whole, um, the whole supplier base has increased mm. in two stages, right? In two steps, huh? as I say. With some duplications, right? Clearly. But indeed, but indeed uh, um, with increased complexity, because actually, besides the, the geographical footprint, we also added um, uh, contractual complexity given the, 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 the source of the different um, contract parties. So even though we are dealing with the same entity globally, uh, the acquisition brought is multiple contract mm. with multiple conditions, with multiple uh, um, commercial agreements behind. And then I think also trying to condense everything into, uh, into a, a unique piece of paper is a kind of, uh, yeah, not easy exercise, right? That's yeah, something yeah. where the team is dealing with. What opportunities are there for supply consolidation and, and simplification? Presumably there must be some economies of scale when you, you're integrating four different businesses. I mean, indeed. I mean, in my mind, there are economies of scale. There are economies of skills as well, because actually we learned from, uh, also from the acquisition on better supplier base in some cases. Mm. Uh and there is also an economies of scope because actually what we are trying, we are also trying to combine and maximize the scope of the different suppliers, right? We are playing that there are an uh, intersection of uh, geographies and, and topics that, are, that at the very beginning we didn't know or we were not aware or we were not leveraging. Mm. So, so I think that that's um, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, what makes things complex, of course, is that pharma is a very regulated environment, and especially on the direct uh, product, direct material, any change can happen uh, overnight, right? Mm. And require also a lot of uh, country by country. Well, so whatever kind of um, say, optimization of the supplier base, it's something that needs to be very well planned ahead yeah? because there's a, a lot of uh, we will effect. I think you've said previously that pharma is both beauty and the beast. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by that? The beauty is, in my mind, driven by three main drivers. First of all, it's a, it's a, it's a, the purpose of the industry is, is fantastic, right? It's a, mm. The second is that an industry in continuous, um, continuously evolving, right? Because actually there is a strong push, of course, on, the, on, on, on developing and finding solution or alternatives, not only on the product itself, but also on the way of delivering the product. No? So try to, how to expand the mm -hmm. shelf life. I mean, there are a lot of technology behind and I think the third one is that also is an is a, is an industry which is also increasing the focus on operation procurement itself, right? Mm -hmm. Despite being an industry with with decent, uh, let's say, decently healthy, I would say, but it's also an industry which is now focusing a lot on on how the supplier base is managed, on how the the, the procurement itself is strategic, right? For mm. the beast is because actually uh, the the industry is very regulated, is very um, it's very great that it is not in a way harmonized cross country, right? Every country has its own its own requirement, uh, which, especially as I said, on a direct product, would uh, would make changes and development pretty complex, right? So the lead time to do things is is, is long. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Even on the most, uh, on even on the easiest thing. Uh, if you want to change an artwork, I mean, you need to go through regulatory approval as many countries, right? And mm -hmm. submit that you have changed things on your package. When you joined Alpha Sigma, I imagine that with a consultant's background and a consultant's eye, you must have spotted there were areas for improvement or doing things differently based on other clients and industries that you've worked on before. Interesting to know what those were. Well, I think there were several uh, several things that I've seen, right? And I think some were short term, some were are a little bit more mid to long term. Mm. I think on the short term, um, also by nature, given that the company is coming from a, a series of acquisitions, so is growing organically, but also inorganically. Of course, one of the first thing was to say, okay, let's see what we buy across a different site or a different region, across a different location. Let's see to Let's try to harmonize not only 
Mm -hmm. the pricing itself, but also the, the, the specification, the technical requirements and how we do things, right? So that was kind of a bread and butter type of thing. Yeah. In my mind, the long term is more on the really the um, a proper strategic supply relationship management because mm -hmm. procurement was very much, well, I have a needs, I need to buy stuff and then stuff gets into my plant that I produce. Mm -hmm. But now given... Uh, a lot of additional complexity that came into the industry, um, things that everyone knows, right? Problem on the Suez Gulf War, uh, issues with some production sites that have been banned or have been uh, re restricted. So the whole um, resilience of the supply chain became extremely important. Mm -hmm. And then sh shortening supply chain, making the supply chain more resilient and making it more closer, I would say, to where you produce, to where you manufacture. I think is driving a, a way different, uh, well, a much different approach on strategic relationship management with suppliers. Mm. So how important then would you say the procurement function is as a strategic partner internally? Are you and your team involved at the start of the conversation yeah. around product development, decision making? It has changed a lot in the last few months. I think at the very beginning, it was very more on the execution side. So uh, there was a light of late stage in involvement. In reality, we are now pushing much more on the early stage. Uh, and we start from the, the clinical development. So we start from the, the, all the CROs and, and, and the research that needs to be done up to the final production, right? And in reality, we have two main channels, right? There are things that we produce in-house. There are things that we, make, that we ask external manufacturers to produce, right? So in both ways, um, the organization realized that the, the, the importance of having procurement on board at a very early stage is also not only giving benefit on the product itself, on, the, on its marginability, on the margins, on costs, on costs and everything, but also it's an easy access to the market. Yeah? Because in reality, uh, there are plenty of activities that procurement can run in parallel while the product is developed, while the formulation is developed, while the the, 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 the tests are developed, right? And mm -hmm. then uh, are we um, set on this? I would say no. There is still, a, there is still a, a, let's say, a room for growing, room for improving, but at least there is a strong, there was a strong tendency in our shifting the involvement much more in the early phase. Mm. And I imagine that it, particularly when you're trying to take on new acquisitions, the approach to organizational design needs to be rethought, reimagined anyway. Do you have a target operating model that you're working towards for how you want procurement to be? Yeah, we have redesigned the organization and uh, with the redesign, of course, we have um, redesigned the, the, the target operating model. Uh, in some cases, it was more a lift and shift of the processes that there were because actually there are still part of those are still part of the, sorry, the part of the GMP, so the global, uh, the procedure, the, 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 the pharmaceutical procedures that needs to be respected. But I need quite a lot of um, activities within procurement have changed, and then the operating model, a new operating model has been designed. Huh? And then mm -hmm. that's not only for procurement, but also, so not only within procurement, but also outside procurement where procurement is involved. Is that more of a, a centralized model? We are, um, yeah, we are in a kind of a central lens, if I might say. So not necessarily centralized from a geographical perspective, but um, indeed we have uh, now designed a strong category-based um, function, right? With a lot of, uh, with a lot of, um, I would say, uh, we, 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 sorry, with a strong procurement excellence support, right? That gives um yeah support on several topics from analytics up to product development up to PMO, mm. up to digital etc and also with a little bit of the tribe logic or the agile logic the lean logic the agile logic versus the other function right so we have some kind of very lean committees to define um how the production capacity should evolve internally and externally how the financial uh, check and healthy check of suppliers should evolve internally and externally how the, um, the the manufacturing and 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 um, capex investment plan should evolve, and then how procurement can basically chip in and and support, right? So mm -hmm. I think there are this kind of um, yeah cross-functional small tribe that are really pushing things forward. Yeah, how digital savvy 
would you say the organization is at the moment and and where where do you see there being opportunities for using digital ai automation maybe trying different types of procure tech how do you see mm-hmm. this so the, the organization is on uh, is on its way to digital savviness i would say mm-hmm. indeed we have our own uh, digital tech but i don't think it's leveraged the way it should right we have a limited use of uh, technology maybe uh, quite some descriptive analytics yeah just to get some kind of a dashboard and data outside mm-hmm. which is um not what we need completely right i think we are now more transiting transitioning sorry into um this sorry descriptive and prescriptive analytics so we want to understand okay. not only what's what happened in the past but also what are the possibilities that might happen in the future what is the scenario analysis that could happen in the future does that sit as part of or on top of your erp this is something that we need yeah that we are planning to build on top of the erp mm. But indeed, I mean, when we started the, this kind of a journey, I mean, we started with uh, re, in a way, cleaning a little bit what we had, starting again with transparency, starting again with a, a, a culture of uh, data consistency, mm. and then building basically um, a more sophisticated suite of tool in uh, to, to support basically company decision. We are not focusing so we are focusing at this stage more to buy what we found on the market so not to design tool but more to mm-hmm. buy and we are still in a way if I, if I might say thinking whether uh, how much of best of breed model versus a single entity or single structure model should be i think to be honest we are more on a single uh, a single entity i would say yeah with mm-hmm. some uh, addition here and there it's not a full best of breed, but at the, I mean, but considering the journey we're in, and considering the also the um, the digital maturity, so far is what we think is uh, is, is support best. I would say evolution. Yeah, those new acquisitions. Have you been able to migrate them already across into one ERP, or are they all? No, no, we are still. No, I think the immigration it's a, it's a very complex uh, exercise. So, um, I think some. some Pieces of this migration can happen uh, in kind of six months' time, and mm-hmm. then there are some other parts of those acquisitions that needs to have uh, where we need to basically think much more uh, thoroughly how to integrate. It's always a much longer process. Yeah, yeah, indeed, 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 indeed. I mean, the company is, is in a way is evolving quite uh, with a quite high pace. So uh, integration is something that we need to ins- to, to to do to ensure, uh, let's say. Uh, sustainability, but also continuity of the exercise. Um, but indeed, there are clearly there are areas that uh, that we need to look at to uh, further strengthen the uh, basically one alpha sigma, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where we are heading towards. Yeah. Lots going on. As you look at twenty twenty four, I mean, what would you say your key priorities are going to be? I would say there are. Maybe three, four priorities. I would say three in the business and one on the people. I think on business for sure, we need to continue delivering value. Uh, that's uh, something that uh, it's it's no brainer, right? Mm-hmm. We uh, we need to fuel, continue fuel, basically the willingness of the company of looking at the market for other potential uh, deal, right? For potential opportunities. I think there is an element of. Um, Ensuring that the new operating model, new target operating model, is well set up and and uh, in a way delivered com- com- completely huh, across mm-hmm. the the different the different sides of the organization. And there is an element of digitization, right? So where we need to basically do the big step up huh, on, in digital in the digital maturity. And from a people perspective, I think in my mind there is there are two elements on people side. One element is really Mixing together properly all the people that now belong to the organization, right? So mm. the acquisition brings a lot of different, uh, not only uh, profiles from a capability perspective, but also culturally. So we need to integrate everyone. And also we need to integrate into a new way of doing things, right? So there's that's the two angles from, from the people's side, right? And my In my mind, those two are really the, the backbone or the enablers to make the other three, so the value, the digital transformation, the operating model in place, right? If we don't, if we don't have uh, people fully integrated, fully, I would say, 
convinced of the trajectory, right, that the company is taking and how we are embracing the new way of working, I think it's going to be difficult to, to deliver the rest. Sounds like it could involve a lot of travel for you then if you're going between so many different sites trying to bring people together. I mean, coming from consulting, uh, traveling is uh, anywhere, I mean, can be worse, I would say, at least mm -hmm. in my experience. I mean, like, but, but indeed, I think um, there are people sitting at sites, sitting in different location, and that's, that's not just, uh, I, I mean, Teams or Zoom, fine. But actually, at the end, when you sit people around the table and then you have time to really problem solve things live mm. would, would really make a difference, right? And uh, would also accelerate this kind of sense of belonging, right? The sense of uh, being one, one firm. Absolutely. It's all about building trust, isn't it? Particularly with, if a company's been acquired, they need to feel like they're part of the, part of yeah. the family. Yeah, indeed. For others who are listening, who might want to be uh, a CPO themselves one day, I wonder if there's any advice that you could share about what you think it takes. Maybe it's about behaviours or an attitude or what advice could you share? Well, in my mind, it depends a lot on what part of the evolution uh, curve of a company you join as a CPO hmm. and, and maturity, of course, of the gains issue, right? There are companies where procurement is very well established, right? And most likely what you need to do is really uh, finding maybe new source of value, right? Delivering what you have, but finding new source of value. Right? There, are, there are cases where the company is really in a new, uh, approaching a new era, like, like we are. And then I think, the, the goal here, at least the mid -term, the short mid term, is very much on building. Yeah? Mm -hmm. if, of course, you need to deliver, but you need to build, right? You need to secure success for the for the years to come. I mean, get, getting having very clear or getting clear what is uh, what is the the evolution, what is the goal, right? I think is crucial uh, to design uh, your. Uh, I would say six months, twelve uh, sorry, six, twelve, and eighteen months journey at least, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, from my experience, or what I've seen also from 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 a previous uh, say consulting life, it's also a matter of priorities of the of the company, right? So, so getting very much aligned with management, um, what what do you need to bring, huh? mm. and uh, making sure that actually there is a kind of full uh, harmony, right, in what the company wants to bring and what you want to bring, right? If there are clash uh, on the priorities, or if there are clash on uh, what, what you feel are the right it's a lever to pull that are not the same, right, as, as the, the management. Huh? And then mm. I think, yeah, it's better to, to think twice, right? Because actually otherwise the, 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 the real, yeah, the experience will not be the ones that, uh, that, that you're expecting. Is there a quick way to do that or a hack for how to do that? Because when you're, when you're a consultant, I imagine you have to build trust, get alignment very fast, is there a particular technique or an approach you've used which you think really works to get aligned? I mean, when I joined, I was in a way more, very much my consulting mode, right? So I said, well, mm -hmm. I need to, uh, we, we as a team, I mean, the team is different, right, guys? So we need to, let's sit together. Let's try to understand what are the, 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 what are the things that you feel you can pull huh, on different people to deliver value. Let's try to build on those strengths. Let's try to understand also what are the gaps. Mm. and uh, to assess the gaps really openly and then try to, in parallel, to cover those gaps, right? I think the, the sense of, um, uh, when, I, when I joined, I think one of the first thing was in a kind of uh, a sort of a procurement event, one day procurement event after one, one and a half months that I was in, where I see the whole team together and I said, guys, we need to write the, sto the story of our function for the next uh, two years, right? That's my vision, that's my goal. Mm. But this shouldn't be my vision or my goal only, right? This is something we need to build together because if you don't believe in what you're doing, we will not will not make it happen, right? So I think it was an extremely exciting exercise having all those guys sitting around and says, well, I think we should have this, we should take this, we should postpone this one or accelerate another thing. And mm -hmm. at the end, we came out with a sort of a manifesto, right? Of what is the journey that we want to take mm. over the next two or three years? And I think now everyone is more or less uh, clear where we're going and i think if you if you talk to people more or less people are able to give the same um, vision right of where, where where the function is going where the company is going that's really interesting it's also important to pick the right uh, as i said at the beginning the right topics that you want to develop or deploy in the short term right so mm. there are a lot of uh, hypes 
right now in the procurement world, like resilience or sustainability or risk. And I think, of course, you can't do everything at once. And you also need to be very clear on what are the priorities for, for, for the company more than for procurement only, right? Mm. Um, and sometimes you need to make you need to make uh, tough calls, right? There are things that you feel should be expedited or prioritized because are needed, but also they don't match with the maturity, right? Or the evolution of the company, right? So I think it's very also important to align the trajectory and the vision of the function to the trajectory of the vision of the company, right? Mm. I think the two things needs to go hand in hand. And the risk that I've seen otherwise is that procurement will have kind of a, a kind of its own, its own uh, vision and strategy, which is anyway would be very difficult to accomplish because actually it differentiates quite a lot from what the, the company wants to achieve, right? So mm -hmm. I think. Uh, for me, um, it's very clear that the, the two things need to be designed end in end, which doesn't mean that procurement needs to take as a sort of um, yeah, wait and see what the company wants to do. It needs to provide input. But then at the end of the day, this should be a sort of harmonized uh, design. Yeah, that's really good advice. Thank you. Fabio, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure speaking to you today. Same for me. And thanks a lot for the time and for uh, hosting me here. Thank you. Now, before we go, I'd like to mention CDMO Live, a new event from us at PharmaSource. CDMO Live is a new online event designed to connect you with the latest insights and innovative partners in contract manufacturing. We've put together an in-depth program of expert talks and roundtables to help you work with CDMOs to accelerate drug development, decarbonize scope through emissions, and optimize contract manufacturing networks. To find out more, head to pharmasource.global slash CDMO Live. Thank you for listening to today's episode. 